Hi everyone, this is Gideon uh, casting with Tyrell here, and uh, basically this is the game two of the, the match between Fitch OD and Antares Bad. Um, basically, uh, this is a clan war for the uh, iClub uh, team league. Um, uh, we have uh, Fitch in the bottom right hand corner as Zerg, and we have uh, Antares uh, at the top as White Terran. Uh, Tyrell, what can you tell me about this matchup? Well, this matchup is going to be game two with Fitch up one nothing on a really good game played on Athena. I was really impressed at the game. It was probably one of the best non-pro games I've seen in a while with a lot of... Those pincer attacks were just completely... just tore the Terran apart. And this map's going This map's a fellow, so it's going to be different, so... because this is a four-player map instead of three-player, so there's a one in a four chance that you find your opponent on... or a one in a three that you find the, your opponent on the scape. Yeah, scaling is going to be uh, much more important in this game than the other one because just because of uh, the escape of the the whole map and how large it is. Yeah, Othello is a really big map. It's got those easy to take expansions that you can wall right off if you're Protoss or Terran. So why don't we start this game and see what see how she ends up? And like Gian said, this is Fitch starting in the bottom corner, and up here at the top we have. Bad and Terry's in the White Terran. Now I'm interested to see if this game goes more macro oriented or more micro oriented. GM, what would you expect to see from the last game? Actually, I'm, I think I'm going to expect a um, uh, kind of a mix. Uh, judging from last game, uh, Fitch kind of just overwhelmed and Terry's with his large amounts of Zerglings and Lurkers. It was just, uh, uh, just overwhelming. Um, I, I have a feeling Terry is going to respond with uh, maybe more tanks this game after seeing the, the large amount of lurkers that Fitch had. Yeah, and not to mention the fact that I think Antares is going to be more on his guard this time and try not to get pincered in like he did last time in the choke points. And you do have a couple choke points that you can use on Othello, like you see here where the Overlord is coming through. That could be a very vital choke point. I mean, it's right outside of Mineral only, I believe. And that's going to be one of the key po That will be one of the key battles of this map, I do believe, this little choke point. Now, it's interesting that uh, the Zerg player, Fitch, is actually sending his Overlord straight to Antares' base. So he's going to have a slight advantage in uh, knowing where he is. But Antares is going to know uh, where, um, where Fitch is, judging by the direction that the Overlord is coming from. So we're going to see how much advantage uh, both players can get out of this. Let me see that it looks like Fitch, yeah, he throws down the 12 hatch. Well, it's looking like that. As soon as he gets 300 minerals, we know he's going to. You just see the drone there waiting. SCV scout coming in just to see what's going on. He's going to see that Fitch has gone hatch before pool and he's going to know that he's going for a more macro off the start and that might contribute where to Antares might put more pressure on him now. And we see two barracks is coming up now for Antares so it looks like he is going to try the early game pressure once again. Yeah very similar builds coming from both players. Looks like Fitch is going for the early gas. Looks like he's going to get on that gas. And he's probably going to go... I don't know, if I was Fitch, I might skip the Mugula step and go straight to Lurker Tech, but... That's not... I'm not Fitch, but we're going to see what happens, I guess. We might just see standard TVZ again. And I don't see an academy coming up for Antares, so he might either be waiting for it or he might just be using his first couple marines to harass and then he's going to go for a different style of build. Maybe uh, he just, uh, just put his academy in. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to see another SK Terran looking build. Once again, we see Fitch is going to go with those sunken colonies that saved him a couple times last game again. But it makes it so easy. 
to wall off, doesn't it, though, Jim, with that little power generator there? I mean, yeah, it yeah, it does. And here we see a little latch dish, at, latch dish ditch effort by Antares' SCV attack on the lair. And it's going to get popped very quick. And here we see seven marines coming in against one sunken colony. So this could turn out bad for Fitch, but this looks like it's just going to be a little bit of a rush. And if this rush fails, it looks like he's throwing all of his... It looks like he's throwing all this into this little rush attempt, doesn't it, GM? I mean, I don't see him trying to expand. Well, actually, well, actually the last game, game uh, Antares did a very similar thing with his Marines. But uh, the difference between that game and this game is that uh, the Marines attacked when the sunken was not yet completed. So he had the chance to pick off a, a, a drone or two. This game, however, there's already a sunken up and uh, he has Zerglings right there. So I have a feeling if Antares chooses to attack, he's just going to get slaughtered. You see now Firebat's coming down for Antares. <coughs> Now, sorry about that, everyone, I just had a little bit of a throat clear. Now, the difference between Firebats and Marines, obviously, is Firebats have to go closer to attack. But Firebats do way more of a splash to smaller units like Zerglings and Hydralisks, and are probably better to use against melee units. A stimmed up Firebat can do quite a bit of damage, I've seen. What well, I think is interesting is actually, uh, and Terry's here, uh, got caught a little bit with his supply. He didn't have enough supply to produce units out of his barracks in the command center. So now he should actually be a little bit behind Fitch in terms of production. Can we see Fitch starting to attack? Oh, he's just perfect Zergling my brother right there. He lost probably two compared to the pile of blood splats that were there from Antares and Zerglings are just so easy to replenish. I mean, it's a two for one deal. Who can who doesn't care? Now, uh, uh, I would like to explain uh, what Fitch just did. A lot of people don't notice uh, the kind of kind of strategy and control it takes to do the maneuver that Fitch just did. What he really did is he split his Zerglings into two groups and surrounded the, the Marines in the sense that um, they get attacked from all sides, dealing a maximum amount of damage in a short amount of time to make sure that the medics can't heal the Marines and fire bats in time to, to really save them. So really, Fitch just did an excellent maneuver to take out a lot of Marines and, and everything. Well, it looks like here Fitch is going to try and break up the ramp of what looks like probably a control group at least. Oh, and he sees that the group of Marines and fire dies, he pulls back. But now we see Mutalisks out here now for Fitch, so we're probably going to see some heavy Muta harass quite soon. And I see three turrets up at Terry's mineral line, which they're not very well... Oh. Well, they were three, but looks like he's putting up another. He's putting up two more. He's gonna well protect that mineral line, unlike last game where he only had a couple. Now I'm actually well, surprised, I'm actually surprised that Fitch is uh, not taking his uh, second expo. In the last game, he showed a really um, kind of risky attempt to uh, take a lot of expos early on, but uh, we're not seeing that this game. And here we see. Oh, looks like. Fitch is going to use his mutas to do a little bit of scouting, maybe a little harass. We see another medic marine group moving out here, but look at how many turrets and Terry's is dropping money into. One, two, six turrets just to protect his mineral line. That's three marines. He, that's three marines he could have had for each two turrets. But it looks like it's going to pay off here now in this. Fitch sees the massive amount of turrets and just backs right off. But Fitch playing the same way with his sunken colonies, he's got six of them up. And we see the Hodulus den coming up here now, so we're probably going to see him make the tech switch into Lurkers. And that Terran force is just going to have nothing, nothing to do with just being able to be killed. And the to work for this. Would you say he's just using his mutilus just to bite the time, do a little bit of harass here and there, and just wait for lurk? And we see GG. 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 Well, everyone, that was a quick match.